Now, as you well know, if you follow this channel, I haven't put out any videos for the last three months. There's good reason for that. Uh, I'll get into that and what I'd like to see on the channel in 2024. So stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Daryl, welcome to the channel. Now today, I'll just give you an explanation why I haven't done anything for three months. I've just been off air. And apart from answering a few questions here and there, uh, I've done nothing. I've done no videos or anything. I've alluded to the fact in the last video that um, I had a new role and I was going through training and it was fairly intensive. That training has lasted three months and I've just finished it, which is a huge weight off my shoulder. Um, I haven't done anything like that for many a year and at 60 to be in at the deep end, uh, it was interesting. I was in the fetal position a few times. <laughs> waking up in cold sweats in the middle of the night thinking, oh God, I've got to go down to study. Um, but I've got through that. I'm pretty chuffed with myself at this age to get through all that training. There was a lot. There was a lot of it. Uh, I can't actually say too much about the role because of disclosure reasons. I'm a public servant now after being in private enterprise all my life um, and enjoying it a lot. So that's what I've been up to. But on to more important things. The channel in 2024. I'll break all this down into, you know, campers and cars and everything like that because there's stuff I'd like to do in each one. You know how the channel works by now. In 2024, there's some camper stuff I still want to tweak on this camper. Um, next thing will be solar. Uh, the 250 watt fixed solar on the roof of the camper seems really inefficient when you compare it to the uh, 300 watt solar blanket that I have. The blanket just cranks power into the camper and I'm to the point where it's like, well, do I just ditch the, the fixed solar on top of the roof of the camper? Um, they'll take 15 kilos off the camper weight and just get another 300 watt solar blanket. And with two 300 watt solar blankets, we'd nearly be uh, pushing the limits of the 25 amps that we can push into the camper at any one time. So yeah, there's some stuff I'd like to play around with there. Uh, I'd like to see if I could pull a little bit of weight out of this thing. Um, not because I have to, because I reckon it'd be a bit of fun trying to itemize different things where we could pull some weight out of. Um, and, and that's what we take away too. We're fairly minimalist with what we take away, but there's some savings to be had. And uh, as you know, I like things to be organized when we go away. And there's probably a little bit better organization that we can do. Um, I do have some ideas for some a new camper. Uh, there's two campers I'd really like to build. One um, I won't be able to do until I get a new vehicle to tow it with because we're at the limits of my vehicle with regards to this camper. I would like to build a slightly larger camper on a tandem axle, still a teardrop, square drop type of thing. But I've got some ideas with regards to that, but it's going to be exy and uh, I need to be able to use it. And until I get a vehicle that can tow more than 900 kilos, I can't do that. The other camper I do have in mind though is, you know, a very lightweight uh, strip back camper um, without all the fancy stuff. Uh, and see how cheap we could build, bring it in while still building, you know, a good quality camper, strip back, fairly small, really an option for the rooftop tent. There's a couple on the market that I think are absolutely awesome little campers. Um, and I think I could do something fairly good that would be of interest to you guys, um, especially bringing it in at a price where it's like, well, that's, that's pretty good to build for that price. Some ideas I've got about building campers. Um, I also plan to do some walk arounds and some uh, overviews of some commercial campers. They seem to be really popular. <laughs> Now the next thing is the house and the landscaping. There's, I've got most of the landscaping now done. We've put in some really nice uh, gates and fences connecting the house with the side fences. Um, the cost of those were huge. It was like a thousand dollars a meter for this stuff. I mean, it's worked out really well, but you know, you're buying, what was it? Nearly five meters of stuff and it was 
four and a half grand. <laughs> I mean, it was, and I had to then put it all together. It was like, my God, like aluminium fencing, uh, huge amounts of money. Um, but anyway, that's all done now. Now with the house, we've had some interesting settlement that had to have an engineer involved from the builder. Um, we're trying to get the builder back to fix it with, yeah, not a lot of luck. <laughs> You know, the whole, I don't have anything to tell you, it's wearing thin. Um, so we're, we're at the pointy end of pushing that into something else. I really don't want to go into that here unless I have to, but I do have a really good story to tell. Uh, as such, we can't build this large deck we have at the back of the house. Uh, what I have done is I've put all the posts in around the perimeter of this deck uh, that support the deck, and I've then landscaped from then out. Uh, which is much, much better because we've been two years in it here now and our backyard has just been dirt. So think about living in a minefield, um, but we've now got that all turfed. Uh, we've got our garden beds in. Uh, it's actually turning out quite nice and now we just need the last piece of the puzzle, this deck, uh, before you know, I can start on all of the finishing work because there's a lot of finishing work there to do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's getting there, it's sucking all their money out, it feels like you get paid and you just come home and you go at the local hardware shop and landscape supplies or sandstone supplies. Um, yeah, it, and even with this deck, I worked it out the other day and just the decking boards is 5,000 bucks. Like that's just buying the actual decking boards. And then I've got joists and yeah. There, there's a lot in it. And just putting the posts in the ground, it works out every two posts is like 125 bucks and this deck's 12 and a half meters long and yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we're hoping to get through that ASAP. Now onto motor vehicles, I'm a real enthusiast with regards to these things. We've got two motor vehicles in our fleet and they're both aging a lot. We've got the Jeep TJ, a 2006 TJ. It's exceptionally reliable now. I've done a lot of work on that. And when, um, just before I stopped making the videos three months ago, I did all the wheel bearings in it. Um, we've got chrome molly front drive shafts in it now. Uh, I did the rear brakes with new drums. Um, and because we, we went away up the coast towing the camper and I thought I just need to get all this work done. Hence why, I bought a press because <laughs> it was cheaper to buy the press and buy the wheel bearings and get it done. Um, but the Jeep is running absolutely superbly. Uh, the aircon's not working at the moment. I've also changed the heater core in it. That was one of those jobs I've put off for many a year, but I just thought, you know, while I've got a bit of time to myself, I'll just get it done. I'm not documenting it. Um, it was. You know, it wasn't that bad a job, but it wasn't that good a job to do either. It was just one of those jobs you love to hate. But because of that, I've got to get the air conditioning regassed and put all new O-rings in it, and I just haven't had time to do it. Uh, and in the middle of summer here, I would like to have it done because I come home soaked in sweat, uh, <laughs> which isn't good for anyone. Um, so yeah, need to fix that. But the Jeep's actually very reliable now, touch wood. The other motor vehicle that we own is a 2013 Mitsubishi ASX. It's a front wheel drive, two litre auto. I hate it. <laughs> hate it with a passion. But it's reliable as. Donna bought it along with her when Donna and I got together about five years ago. An appliance that people buy when they don't care about motor vehicles. And she came along with this. And it's the most bizarre car I've ever owned. Um, it came with some no-name brand tyres on it, which, you know, she had to get tyres and her ex got them fitted for her. But it's the only car I've ever been in where if you're on a really rainy freeway, the traction lights will come on. What, and, and you could feel the car struggling for grip, and it was just these crappy tyres. So we've got decent tyres on it now, and that seems to be a lot better. But I just want it gone. <laughs> I just want something in my driveway that I actually desire um, for both of us. So I'm a, I would also like a new Jeep, <laughs> but with the cost of those is huge. New, new second-hand ones are coming down with COVID. I notice all used car prices are dropping, which is very, very interesting. So 
won't be able to do anything with regards to that until such time as the deck is done because that's going to be the last major project on the house. But it's a real, been a real conundrum sort of trying to work out in my mind what I'd like to do with motor vehicles. Uh, I don't see the point of us owning two Jeeps. Like, I, I did think that. I thought, oh, well, we'll get Donna a short wheelbase JL. I just don't see the point. I like sports cars or, or fast, comfortable cars, and I, I'd like to have a good four-wheel drive and a good, fast, comfortable car. Looking around, I'm also a bit of a mini freak. Yeah, I've, my first car was a mini, and I've owned the supercharged, the first BMW supercharged version, which was an awesome vehicle. My father then bought a 2008 turbocharged, what was it, 1.6 convertible Mini, um, which was the, one of the worst vehicles we've ever owned. Um, there was so much went wrong with it. However, the new, or from 2016 on, two litre turbocharged F56 Mini looks to be a bit of a gem. And I've just been going down the rabbit hole with regards to those. They kind of don't seem to hold their value that well, which is a good thing. I would like to get a John Cooper Works version, which is like uh, Mini's M series, BMW M series, or uh, you know, Mercedes AMG series. So the John Cooper Works uh, Mini of some description. Also looked, and whilst I would like a Mini GP, <laughs> I really desire a Mini GP, the last one they put out. 300 horsepower, 2 litre turbo, Torsen front diff. Um, it does have some torque steer, which I reckon is a good thing. Front wheel drive, why wouldn't it be a good thing? Um, two seater, which is a bit of an issue for us. It would have to be a third car, which is just in the garage, and I don't think we're there yet. So I think we need a John Cooper Works Cooper S in a two-door, a Countryman maybe, or they do a Clubman, which is a four-door station wagon-y type thing um, in the F56 chassis. Interesting thing, in 2019, the Clubman got the Mini GP's 300 horsepower engine, and in 2020, the Countryman, which is the SUV version, um, also got that, and both Clubman and Countryman are uh, front wheel drive with rear wheel drive coming in if needed. Both seem to be very good vehicles, and, and to be honest, on the second hand mark, somewhere between 40 and 45k, uh, you seem to be able to, pick, be able to pick up a fairly good example of either one of those. So, um, I did go and look at some brand new uh, run out Cooper S's, JCW's yesterday in a two door. I did look at, they've got some good finance deals at the moment. Eh, it's still a bit exy. <laughs> bit of a tight ass, I know. Uh, but yeah, that, that's where I'd like to go with all of that. With the Jeep, it's running really well, and I don't see any reason what, uh, why I get rid of it. Although at this point of time, if I did sell it, I would get fairly good money for it because TJ money seems to have jumped up a little bit, especially for good examples, um, which that is now. But my conundrum then is what would I buy? And that would either be a Gladiator or a JL two-door, you know, and I think without getting engineering here, the biggest tire I can run on them is a 34 with a two inch lift, which to be honest, would be, would be good enough for most of the stuff that I needed to do. With the E mountain bike, uh, I'm pretty happy with where it is. Um, wouldn't mind playing around with some new tyres, some of the new Continental tyres. They look pretty interesting. Uh, I've bought a new rack to take it around on the back of the Jeep. I just had no confidence in the other rack, even after the modifications I did on it. Splashed out, bought a decent rack, and it is absolutely superb. Um, should have done it sooner. Nothing is going to come off this rack. It is. It is really, really good. So there'll be an episode on that too. But as you can see, lots happening in 2024 onwards. I don't know how much we're gonna get done, but hey, let's just go on the ride together and see what we can do. I, I tend to do that anyway. But lastly though, a big thank you to everyone who watches this channel. Um, I get a lot of joy from the, the replies. Uh, I try to reply to as many as what I can. Um, I love hearing those that I've helped. Yeah. It, makes me very, very happy. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching everyone. A lot more content to come out this year. 
I don't know if it'll be weekly or fortnightly, but um, I'll do what I can. So thank you for watching again, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.